What is going on? So today we are back on the F-150. So I've got this clicking, kind of rattling noise that I've been chasing around for a while, couldn't figure out what it was. We're gonna dive into that and figure out what's wrong with this thing. It's apparently a common issue on the 97 through 2003 F-150s. I had a 99 before this one, made the exact same noise. I ended up selling it before I ever dove in and figured out what was wrong with it. We're gonna figure it out on this one today. We are also gonna talk about squeaking noise in the 97 through 2003 F-150s. There's a couple common things that I've seen over the years that I'm gonna point out to you. Pretty much inspected everything under here and there's really nothing obvious there's nothing loose um, the problem doesn't go away when I hit the brakes so if you got a problem with the brakes themselves you know the brake pads or the um, you know the calipers then when you put the brakes on the problem would go away I've checked out the shocks and all the mounting on both of them those all look good looked at the leaf springs the mounting on both ends of those those are good i've actually had the cover off the rear differential there's nothing funny going on there i've replaced the fluid made sure that it wasn't anything with the limited slip so on these you got to make sure you have a, a fluid that's compatible with limited slip or you need to add the additive in with the new fluid another thing that could possibly cause an issue a sound like this be U-joints. I actually replaced the U-joints on this one. They're tight, there's no problems there. Now, if you're ever chasing down a squeaking noise on one of these trucks, especially if it's when the suspension is, you know, up and down, these leaf springs, you'll see these spacers in between them. That basically keeps it from being metal to metal. And what I've seen um, and had on one of my own personal trucks was these things will just wear out and disintegrate. And once they do, you end up with metal on metal. Now, the permanent fix, of course, is to e either get these. I'm not sure if you can still get these. And then putting them in is, you know, going to be impossible with the bands. So the other option would be to replace the leaf springs. Of course, we don't want to do that. That's the only thing that's wrong with them. It's a really expensive fix. So what I've actually done in the past is lift the truck up all so unload the suspension basically lift it up let the wheels all hang down what that's going to do is going to unload this as you can see there's lots of space and i've actually taken you know thick pieces of rubber like inner tube material and put it in between all the leaf springs lower it back down it squeezes onto that rubber piece and it gets rid of the noise now, that rubber piece is gonna wear out because once again, it's between two pieces of metal that are trying to rub on each other. So, you know, I had pretty good luck with doing that about once a year to keep that squeak at bay. Another common place you're gonna find a squeak if you're trying to hunt one down on one of these trucks is the tailgate. Let's see if we can hear it here. A little chirp. So that is just play within the tailgate itself. There's basically two ways to fix this. So the first is basically the paw that grabs onto this is just not tight enough. So you can replace this or you can even take a little electrical tape and wrap it around it until the tailgate is tight and no longer has this little bit of play in it. The second way that sometimes works but usually doesn't last is to get in here and grease this up or spray some oil on it get in here spray some oil um, a lot of times that will temporarily take care of the problem as well that's a good way to know if that's your problem though basically the one thing that's left on this truck that we haven't looked over is the parking brake so 
on these trucks, the parking brake, they have disc brakes in the back, but the parking brake is actually just a old style drum brake on the inside of that rotor. So we're gonna take the wheels off this thing, get the calipers off, we'll pull the rotors, see if we can see anything in that parking brake assembly. So now, to get my rotor off, first thing I do is take my caliper off. So on that, all I'm gonna do is remove these two bolts here, let that caliper come up off there and out of the way. Now it's always a good idea to go ahead and get a you know a hanger, a piece of wire, or something to, to allow the caliper to hang on. I might hang on the brake line, which is kind of a no-no, but this is my own truck, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. A lot of times these rotors are stuck on there, so you can just get a hammer and go ahead and pound around on it, see if you can get the brake loose. I think that's the problem. <laughs> Brake pad just fell out of it. So that is definitely the problem. As you saw when I pulled that rotor off of there, my brake pad actually just fell out. So basically they've come detached from the backing plate on them. Top one looks like it's done it too. So that's what's been rattling around and making that horrible noise. So basically the way the parking brake system on these work, of course you've got your cable. What happens when you pull that cable, it expands those out against the inside of your rotor, which is what gives it that, basically locks in. So you've got a spring here that we're gonna have to take out. And then we've got these clips on either side to take both the pads off. So I went ahead and popped this side of the spring out, which is going to release it. And then there is another spring that I need to do the same thing with on the bottom. So what I found was it was easier to take the springs out first. And that gives us some movement so I can go ahead and get these clips out. So I got the old ones off of there. One thing I will recommend, you can see all the hardware. You know, this thing's, all this hardware is original from 2003, so it's all rusted. So I definitely recommend getting a hardware kit as well. It should come with the springs, as well as these retaining pins. And then I just set everything on the floor exactly how it came apart. Top spring, bottom spring, two pads, and I even set these on there exactly how they came out. So when I'm putting the new ones back on, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Now, if you mess up and you don't know, so I always recommend you do one side at a time. Haven't taken that side apart yet, so I can always go over and look at that side if I don't know exactly how something is orientated inside here. So we've got the new shoes on there as, long, as well as the new hardware. Uh, the shoes are all the same, so it doesn't matter. They can be used on either side. You've got your big spring on the top, your small spring on the bottom. There's a new adjuster as well. And then we've got new pins and clips that hold the shoes on each side. Now, what we need to do is adjust it. So basically we're gonna put our rotor back on there, see how tight it fits and adjust these out as need be. So basically we want, when our rotor's on there, we wanna still be able to turn it, but we want it to be close to catching. That way when you put your emergency brake on, it catches and you can get as much pressure on it as, as you can. So I wanna take the rotor, try to put it on here. Now I've got the truck in neutral, so I should be able to spin this. 
And what I'm looking for is for it to just barely catch a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust it out and then try it again. And there we're just barely catching. I can feel as I slide that on and off that those shoes are just barely rubbing on the rotor. So that's where we want it. Now we're just gonna put our caliper back on, our two 10 millimeter bolts, wheel back on and go test drive this thing. This is also a good time to check the pins in your caliper. So I just wanna make sure those move freely in and out, which they do. If they didn't, I'd take those apart and grease them. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. That took care of that noise, so that was a pretty easy fix. See you guys next time.